Hey bro, you wanna collab? Hello again, we're back again. It's us, Extra Reverb. It's me, Austin, with uh, Coker and Jacob once again. Sup, I'm Coker. Hi, I'm Jacob. I'm stupid. And uh, they traded they traded cousins, by the way. Yeah, my cousin's Billy Corgan now, son. <laughs> ha, ha, my cousin <laughs> is Thomas DeLong. What's long? What's so long about him? He's pretty tall. 64 his 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 great spanning career in the music industry his charisma he's a silver tongue listen okay look i'm just saying de is of in spanish and long is long so that means tom's name is tom of long he he sounded so crash he sounded hey, man, so dos vadañas means two vadañas in spanish i got a new song it's called oy es jueves oy es jueves oy es jueves Oi, es jueves. That's the only thing I know. Very in good, very good. Keep that up. You'll be an extra on community in no time. Yay! But anyway, community uh, got canceled because it was crap. Actually, they canceled it. Ended naturally. Coker will be out of a job. Let's all celebrate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we have a few. Yeah, you suck. We Coker. have a few leftover topics actually from last week. I blame. But the Coker. first thing we want to do is a new segment. It's called featured artists or something like that. Basically, whenever we find like a new artist that we've been listening to that we assume that most people haven't heard, we'd like to bring it to your attention. We try to do this every week, just one. This week, I have Vashti Bunyan, and Vashti Bunyan is a uh, English folk singer. Basically, imagine like some old hillbilly grandma sitting on her Appalachian porch in the Appalachian Mountains, strumming an Appalachian dulcimer and singing a song about some Appalachian sheep or something. Now, instead of that Appalachian grandma, put Inya there. That's who Vashti Bunyan is. Yeah. She's folk Inya. And just like Julie Andrews, she has the same voice now as she did 50 years ago when her career started. Or whenever. She's like 70. Anyways, her songs are, you know, pretty comforting. They're the type of songs, as one YouTube comment said that make you want to just go out and start singing to your chickens as you're feeding them. Would you guys like to have chickens? No. No, but I would I would love to own this album. It, it was good. I, I'm always I've always been a fan of British folk music. I mean, I've talked about Nick Drake like how many times in this podcast? Yeah. And I you know, I, I mean, I, I was sort of expecting I'd like it just from the looks of it cuz you can sort of tell the aesthetic based on the covers and stuff yeah w whether or not it's gonna be like a folk album or something you know it was good though i definitely you know her voice is definitely one of those voices that it, it's weird because it's sort of it feels familiar but it also is like very unique you know like it feels like something you've heard before yeah even though you know you've never heard it before <laughs> right well if you want to check out her music We'll have links to two of her albums in the description. They're very good. Personally, I don't want a flock of chickens. I think maybe one pet chicken would be nice, but they don't live very long. What would you name them? Or her? Henry. Nice. What if it's a girl? Henrietta. Oh, you're talking now. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> uh, forget Smart. what I'm saying. Mute me. What's the female form of coker? Co mm, Co uh, Coca-Cola. Coquette. Coquette. All right. coca -fer. Coxica, uh, Cochranda. You're just taking, you're just taking like feminine names and just adding Coke in front of uh, them. Uh, well, how else would you do it? Coca Cola. No, because Coca Cola is a brand, not a name. If we were going by the rules of Spanish, it wouldn't be like the male version would be Coca and the female version would be Coca. Yeah, Coca. That'd be interesting. I'm sure that's a name Coca. somewhere. Like, you got to be one person named Coke. Apparently, Coca. okay, can I be... I, I, yeah, I, okay, so I, I checked. There's this website where you can go in and find your, like, where your surname comes from, which, for those who don't know, it's your last name. Of course. I should have just said last name. But um, in I looked up both of my last... Not both of my last names, but I looked up my last name, and I looked up the last name that my first name or my middle name comes from. 
So I looked up Eastler and Coker on there. Yeah, Coker isn't even his first name. Yeah, by the it's way. my middle. It's my middle name, and it comes from. Wait, what was the first name again? William. What? Yeah, no, it's not. You knew that. It, I you forgot. knew that. Yeah. So it. My name. <laughs> Co- Coker. Sh- Coker. Co- Coker. I was trying to sound like um, R two D two Lego style. Woo! I, I forget. How <laughs> dude, that. Dude, no, but um, that Co- will make an epic sample. Coker comes from my mom's maiden name. William. So I Coker went and looked up. I, I, so I looked up Coker and Eastler on there. Eastler's apparently German. Coker comes from crook, like a crook in a river. That's it comes from a Scot or a, a Gaelic word for that apparently. Nice. And apparently there's five thousand Cokers in New Zealand that I didn't know about. I didn't know there's five thousand people with garbage names. Says the one. Wow. Who, I'm wow. Just okay. <laughs> okay. Jacob. I like your name, Coker. Don't worry. This is the guy whose middle name is. I was. Hey. Okay. Mute that in post, please. Um. <laughs> okay. I don't. Um. I, I was gonna say it's garbage on them because you're the only Coker. Coker. Yeah. You can be yeah, the right. only Coker. That's right. Coker Easler. <laughs> hey. Hey. Question that the viewers won't get. What do you guys think of my icon? It's nice. What do, what do you guys? What do you? What do um, you guys? What do you guys think of it? What, I've seen worse you, from you, so you, I'll makes complain. me feel guilty for something. <laughs> you no. know, makes me wonder if I now, did something on. wrong. You, you know, a, yeah. I'm gonna pull an Austin. Now, hang on. Um, you have a GIF in your profile <laughs> picture, meaning that you have nitro, right? <laughs> so why aren't you boosting the <laughs> server? Huh? Because I was gifted nitro. It's un- it's unacceptable. I, I like, can't care. I can't carry. I can't carry for all of us. You see, um. So we'll talk after. We'll talk after. All right. Speaking of being the only of something, uh, I found out a very interesting story recently of an album that pretty much schemed to be the only album on a collector's shelf, and you know why? Go why? on. Say why. Why? Because the album sleeve, it was a record, the record sleeve was made out of sandpaper, legit designed to scratch whatever records it was next to. It is called The Return of the Daruti Column or something like that. I remember I remember seeing something about that, yeah. Released in 1980 by the English band The Daruti Column. I sure hope I'm saying that right. It was packaged in sandpaper. Imagine that. Like, how was that legal? Well, I mean, the Rolling Stones had an album cover where it had a full zipper on it. I actually got that album. How is that legal? <laughs> Wait. No, I mean, I mean, Jacob, it's not like... I mean, why did I say Jacob? Austin, it's not like the record... Like, the government's going to step in and be like, excuse me? Excuse me? What do you think you're, you're doing there, a, guy? You're, what do you think you're doing? That record <laughs> has a zipper on it. That is not allowed. What if, what if, what if you're... It's vandalism. Um, wait, so you're complaining about sandpaper being on a album? Uh, I used to have a... That's a problem? Okay. I used to have a children's book that was a Spongebob book that had sandpaper for, like, on one page. Like, actual sandpaper. Yeah, but that's not gonna ruin any other books. This thing was literally designed to ruin any other album that it was next to. Not if you... Oh, that's a good point. Not if you did it very carefully. Yeah, but you shouldn't have yeah, to do if it you very like carefully. <laughs> if rap. you scooted it in Dude. very slow, I guarantee you most of the people who bought that on probably were just like, okay, well, I'll just take the record out the sleeve, put in a different one. There's a chance <laughs> that back then they weren't as concerned about preserving their vinyls as they are yeah, now, no, obviously, because it's, it's more of a collector's item now. Like, no one just, like, listens to vinyls just because that's the only way to do it. You know, we're in the digital age. Yeah, it's it's like Kinda like true. CDs. It's true. like how... It's like how all those people ruined their perfectly good copies of the Beatles album yesterday and today just to see if it had the butcher cover on it. Hey, what? Yeah. Okay, this you got to tell us about. Have you not heard about, do you not know about that, Jacob? Of course not. What's up? So the Beatles were making this album called Yesterday and Today. And Mm -hmm. the original, it was, okay, one quick line. The Beatles albums were different in the U.S. compared to the U.K., so like the albums by the Beatles you see on iTunes and YouTube and everything, those are the UK versions. The US had different versions with different tracks on it. And one of those was called Yesterday and Today. 
So they they gave it a cover that had the Beatles and butcher suits with like raw meat and like baby doll parts and everything thrown across them. And oh. it got released. It got released for one day, and the response was so negative about the cover that they they recalled all of it, almost all of them. <laughs> and then they slapped on a new cover that was less, you know, I guess graphic. Yeah, less graphic. And it turns out that they didn't actually get rid of them. They actually just slapped on, like literally ironed on the new cover. And so people <laughs> have actually ruined their copies of Yesterday and Today trying to peel it off. Because you can actually see it. You can see it on a cover. You can tell from looking at it if it has the butcher thing. Because there's like a little, like the color on Ringo's shirt in the original, in the butcher cover is so dark that on the new cover, it, you can actually make it out. Right. It, it goes through. It blends through. So that's how you tell. And people have ruined their copies trying I mean, to get it. why not? And they you sell know, for a they're, lot. They're, they're appealing to the more rare copy. So it's kind of like... Well, yeah, but still, it's... I mean, it's not worth it for me. I'd get someone who knows what they're doing to do it. Like, yeah, um, there was... So there was one woman... Uh, she went... I remember she... So she was on Antique Roadshow. And... In short, uh, she went on there with a copy of it. She didn't think it was anything crazy. They went up to her and they were like, hey, you said you got this at Sears, right? And she says, yes. She, they say, well, it turns out you got it the only day it was available at Sears because they immediately recalled afterwards. And it was like, they valued it at like $1,200. Ooh. That's how valuable it is. When was this? This was in the 90s, I think, but... So imagine, well, like, in, now. <laughs> it's even more expensive now in, um... Of course. In, in like, in 2016, one sold for $125,000. You're joking. I'm not joking. All right, I'm gonna take one of my EPs and make, like, an obscene cover, and then, like, you know, iron on, like, a new cover and, like, get some money somehow. <laughs> I'll just, like, preserve a copy, you know? Oh, well, I forgot to mention, I forgot to mention the the one that sold for a hundred grand was Seal, too. Mm -hmm. Like, it had the, it still had the vacuum seal and everything on it. So it had never been played? Nope, never been played. Well, it was played. They just kind of, like, stuck the, the stick and they just, like, jammed it so far in there that it was, like, it went through the <laughs> Imagine cover, if the Beatles were just like, hey, itself. listen, I have this crazy album, okay? It's Yesterday and Today by the Beatles, but the cover's Sandpaper. <laughs> I see that wasn't funny. Thank you guys. I laughed, guy. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Discord cut me off or something because it was like a little girl chuckle. Um, but it's there. It's there. <laughs> but the real question is, um, what can we put on our vinyl covers to make them unique? I'm thinking like a razor blade or some kind of uh, acidic acid. Maybe and mate and just maybe. What if we put a working stylophone? Grass blades. <laughs> Ooh, make a like make it make the cover out of turf, out of astroturf. Sure, let's do it. Let's do it. No, did not be really cool? Okay, so like you know you know Moon Rock, right? It's it's rock from the moon. Well, what if you, you release an album or something, right? You release like there's like ten copies, just the ten copies as like coded in Moon Rock. It's like the rarest thing in the world, right? Like Moon Rock. Imagine is not what rare. that would sell for. It's kind of rare. Like I can't just go down to the convenience store and pick <laughs> up some Moon Rock. Like if I could buy Moon Rock, no, nah, we're gonna make. I would. No, we got to make it out of something that's affordable still. So let's do something well, like. Well, that's the point. Let's it's do like. Let's that's do what like, like ten coal. copies. Let's do like coal from the Titanic. <laughs> can we find any of that? Like where? I got some. I have some in my room. It's you can get it for like ten bucks. Coal Interesting. from the Titanic. Yeah, coal from the Titanic can get you can get it for like ten bucks. Does it have like minimum. some kind of authenticity? Like. Uh, yeah, they all, it's, it's, I mean, they basically just took a huge rock of it from the ship on one of the expeditions and they just chopped it up and sold it. I got a little bit. Hmm. It's tiny, but still it's a, yeah. Yeah. That is actually pretty cool. Do you ever like look at it? It's like, man, a lot of people died on this boat <laughs> that had this coal on it. Dang. Dang. There's so many That's crazy. ghost and spirits. That's so crazy. If I were a coal. If this coal could talk. Dude, Jacob, we should make we should make the twenty we should make our punk album a concept album, and it's about a guy who bought coal from the Titanic and it ended up haunting his house. I like that idea. How do you come up with these ideas? I'm a, I'm just that smart. Dang. I like this idea. Let's do it. 
It's real life. Produced by World Famous Secret. Oh, yeah, produced by World Famous <laughs> Secret. All right. Cover the four corners of the United States. Actually, actually no, though. I had, a, three. I had another idea for like a album sleeve. What if we made our album, like that album, what if we made the sleeve a transformer? Well, what do we? What about the record? It could be part of the transformer. It could be one of the wheels. That's true. What if we made it out of a T-shirt? Yeah. Yo, that's two. That's what two if we parts, took? That's two things of merch at once. That's two streams of revenue yeah, at exactly. once. Exactly. What if we made it out of a sealed copy of Fred the Movie that I own? Why do you own Fred the <laughs> Just Movie? Just engraved it. Fred the movie is a good movie. You can't the first convince one was me otherwise. Pretty good. Uh, you, is it sealed? So it's yeah. worth like a thousand dollars in a few years. It's not years? sealed, but it's it's a complete. I got the sleeve for it. I got I saw the Walmart sticker on it. It um, it's got it's like uh, a Walmart stickers that sticker of value going and quality. Back, oh yeah, going it's back a steelbook version. <laughs> Going back in like 2012, back when you would get movies from Walmart and they'd come in that little sleeve and you'd be like, whoa, that's crazy, bro. And I'd always see the CDs. I'd always see the CDs and be like, what are those? What are those? Okay. All right. Anyways. (laughs) So did you guys watch any of the videos that I posted this week? Or I didn't post them this week, but you know, did you watch any of them this week? Yeah. Uh. I mean, I know you watched, I watched the you watched the dementia album one that we'll talk about later. Yeah, I did. I'm specifically I wondering talk- about we- the AI powered reverb. Uh, I did not actually get to that. I take it from your silence that you did not either, Jacob. Jacob's just like <laughs> Jacob's just trying to choose his words right. He's like, I don't know what to do. Um, I wouldn't say I. Did not watch it. <laughs> he said he's um, just saying. I, I can't I, say I watched it. Um. Bruh. Oh, Martin Hannett re- re- produced the uh, the Darudi column album. You know, for extra context, guys. Austin was like, "Can you guys please actually watch the videos they sent?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I can." And yeah, and I just no, didn't. Martin, Martin, uh, or not? This is an ongoing uh, problem. What is okay, it? I checked out the uh, like, the dementia one for what it's worth. Um, that's it though. Good. We'll get to that. Austin, like every week is like, you guys, please watch these videos. And me and Jake are like, sure thing, buddy. It's just, (laughs) and then it's just two weeks later. And then he's like, he's like, he he brings it up in the podcast and we're like, oh man, I forgot. I just, I just, I just pause time. Like, and I'm like, oh, gotta watch, gotta watch, gotta watch. It's like the movie. It's like the movie Click with Adam Sandler, and you just rewind <laughs> back, and you're just like, you're like, okay, well, this was watch. I can use this ability to like do good in the world and like save people and stuff. I just use it to like watch the videos Austin wanted me to watch yeah. for the podcast. Okay, so the deal with this is, this is a plugin called Sonable Smart Reverb. It was reviewed by Warren Hewitt, and basically, what it does is analyze your tracks and try and give like the best reverb that it can i want it if i remember right he did it on some drums he did it on acoustic guitars and he did it on vocals and um basically it will like automatically generate whatever parameters you want but it will let you fix them up later so what sort of things do you think you could use that on uh drums yeah drum oh I can imagine you. So, like, it can you. It uses AI to generate the reverb that you need, or is that? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it'd be useful, like, say, like you know, because like, like for example, like those old seventies records where they're not necessarily dry, but the room is really like helping the sound. You could do that with it, you know. Yeah, simulate room tone. That's what yeah, he was I doing mean, a lot of, especially on the acoustic guitar. I could imagine, like, if you want to get, like, the Nirvana Dave Grohl drum sound, you know, from, like, Nevermind, that'd be really useful. That was all room, though. Yeah, no, it, it, that was all, that was a lot of overheads, too. It's just, it's just that whole boomy sounds like, doom, doom, boom, boom, you know. Yeah. <laughs> True. Did y'all see about how Dave Grohl challenged that one girl to, like, a drum battle? Or that, or that girl challenged Dave Grohl, that, like, 10-year-old challenged Dave Grohl to a drum battle, and he was like, yeah, okay, and then he did it. 
That was like recent too. What happened? I don't remember. All I know is it happened. <laughs> oh, I was hoping. I was hoping one of you guys knew. <laughs> nope. No. Yo, I. Uh, I uh, remember when we sorry. talked about sampling sampling our bathrooms reverb? Yeah. Remember when we talked yeah. about that? That would have been. We could still do that. <laughs> we just need a reference mic. AI generated bathrooms. <laughs> yeah. AI generated bathroom reverb. Uh, no, it's uh, like it's like one of those pictures that you know it's an AI generated room. This would be how oh it sounds. Oh my gosh. AI generated AI bathroom reverb. That's how dude, it sounds. Uh, like so like you use that it would be like this room you're hearing this in never existed. Yeah. And no room ever sounded like this before. Yeah, ever. no room ever sounded like this. I would love to. I wonder if, like, if they've ever figured out how to make reverse reverb naturally. I doubt it's possible. I'm just saying, you know, it has to be impossible. Like, how could you even go about doing that? I don't know. Perseverance. Just to see if it for fun, <laughs> just to do it fun. Like you, like you know, just imagine if all the breakthroughs in the world were just for fun. Like, like, like all the Beatles are up there and they're like, oh, okay, did you guys, why did you guys release Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band? This groundbreaking album. There's like, we did it for fun. It was just for fun. I mean, fun. technically they did. Well, that is true. That is, yeah, that's, that is true. No, but like, like was it Albert Einstein's just sitting there and they're like, oh, well, so you came up with this theory of relativity that's changed the way we look at science. So, so why did you do it? For fun. I was bored. I was bored. I had a, I had too much time on my hands. I was, I was bored in class. I was doodling. I was like, whoa, that means something. <laughs> he just, he's just hitting random keys on his typewriter, and he's like, no, yeah, this has to mean whoa, something. Whoa, that means something. He's like, dang, I'm gonna figure out what this means. Yeah. True. True. Edison creating the phonograph was just like, he was like, you know, I had an idea. I was like, man, wax is kind of sensitive. I wonder if it's even so sensitive you can talk really loud and it'll mess it up. <laughs> and then boom. And play it back. So Wait a minute, it worked. Let's try to do it again. But with this time without any sound. So why did you guys go to the moon? Oh, we're just bored, so we thought we'd go check it out. Kind of we bored. thought it'd be fun. Thought it'd be fun. We needed something to do. <laughs> we can't we yeah. can't just like do nothing with this NASA money. Yeah. True. Like sitting on that money. Rather be sitting on some moon rocks and engraving <laughs> records into them. <laughs> yeah. Yo, is there, if there's any scientists out there with some moon rocks, hit me up. What is the auditory version of those black wiggly lines that you see in your eyes, but you can't ever like look at them? What do you mean? The auditory version? Do you like? Do you know yeah, when like, like your ear just like, like starts ringing like randomly, not like tinnitus ringing, but sound yeah. noise? Yeah. Like, Oh, like man, your that's, brain's that's... recalibrating or something, probably that. Yeah, and then you start to focus on it, and it starts to go away. But then the minute you unfocus, it comes right back, dude. Huh. That's it. That's the audio version of that. Like you think you went like, deaf or something, and then it goes away like a minute it, later. And you're like, oh, I guess yeah, I'm fine. No, but like, have you ever had? Like, I'm sure Austin can relate because Austin said tonight before. Like, you'll know Austin when it starts ringing. You focus on it, and after focusing on it, it feels like it's gone away, and you're like, okay, I can relax now. The minute you unfocus, it just comes right back, ringing in your ear. How do you? How do you just have tinnitus? That's like a permanent. Uh, uh, Problem. it can be tr like I I take pills and stuff for it, you know. But it's yeah, I don't have any idea what you're talking about, man. What? If I focus on it, it's just there. Are no, but see? like I mean, I don't know if what I have would be classified as tinnitus, but I do have a bit of a ringing that shows up every so often in my right ear, usually when I'm trying to go to sleep. Oh um, yeah, same. Oh, it's usually bad in older people. It usually happens to older people or people who've been around like really loud guns and stuff. You know, I have a problem with my left ear, and it's gonna take me a minute to explain it. So this started back in I believe ninth or tenth grade. A uh, long story short, if I'm exposed to certain frequencies, or more likely than not, just like excuse me, like loud sounds. Like if I go to like let's say like school assemblies and stuff back when I was still in high school, I would have this problem where my left ear would almost just like not, it wouldn't ring, but it would just sound like kind of like a scratching noise and like I'd feel it. It's kind of like it's kind of like you turn up the resonance or something and just like and you just like I just feel like a scratchy ringing feeling in my left that, ear. 
That's that's called a spider that's crawled into your ear, buddy. No. Jacob's going to become one of those viral videos where so, like a cockroach crawls out of someone's ear. I <laughs> the problem is I Is that is that too gross for extra reverb? Yeah. Someone on Reddit <laughs> explained that like they had the same issue and they they told me what it was called, but it was so long ago that I don't remember what it was and it's unfortunate. I uh, I'm going to try to find out more info and maybe get back to you guys next week, but it's just like it's mostly from like really loud noises, especially if I go to like like concerts or like some days like I'm more like su- like susceptible to it. It just uh, it just and you know I turn down the volume, whatever the case may be. It just kind of ruins my day. How about uh, so four or five years ago, I went to a Beach Boys concert, and I'm very bad with loud noises. I can get easily scared by them, or at least I could back then. I could still a bit now, but uh, back then, so I was kind of scared it was going to be loud. So my mom gave me like earplugs to bring. Last week I found last week I was going through my coat because when I had the this coat that I wore to the concert back then, it was too big for me. But now it sort of fits me now. And I was going through it and I opened up the pockets and the earplugs were still in there. F- like four or five years after oh. I went to that concert, they were still sitting there. Well, there earwax and stuff on it? No, I never used them. It wasn't loud. Oh. It wasn't loud, you know, it wasn't too loud, you know, but it was funny. Like they're still sitting in there. Uh, Jacob, I can relate on that, the whole thing you were just talking about, except it, for me, it's car sick, like motion sickness. Oh, I have that too. In fact, I have vertigo. I have the worst motion sickness. I ha- Like, I hate it. Mm-hmm. Like, some days I'll be fine. I can do whatever I want in the car and I'll be fine. Then other days I will literally, like, look down to, like, see something that fell on the floor and the minute it happens, it's just like, hey, buddy, you're dizzy now. You're sick. And it sucks so bad. Mm-hmm. Everyone like what's funny is we like all of our dogs have had it too. All of our dogs except for one has had like bad motion sickness issues. The only people in our family who don't have it are my si- older sister, my little sister, my dad, and my brother. My mom and I and our dogs and like a bunch of our relatives have it, and they're like, but those couple are the only ones that don't. It's weird. I don't know. It must be like a genetic thing. Hmm. If your mom, if your mom farts while you're still, while you're still in her stomach, then you get motion sickness. Well, <laughs> that's, that's the cause. Jacob, I forgot you had okay. vertigo. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Good, sir. Why do you sound so mad? Why do I sound mad? It's a good question. Why do you sound so mad? Why? Why you were? You sounded so mad, man. I was like, I was <laughs> I like, I was talking about, it and you were like, mm, yeah, mm, 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 yeah. Did Jeff mm. Bezos contact you and say I have some moon rocks, but you're not gonna be able to get your hands on them? No, but Jeff Dunham's puppet Peanut did. Did like, did Lucas? I got oh. some moon rocks, but you can't have it. <laughs> I, I I forget how he. Lost, okay, but. no, Jeff. No, Jeff Dunham's the best. Jeff Dunham character is the is Ahmed. It's not. It's not. It's it's probably uh, no. Nah, it's not. No. Which one's the? I forgot the redneck one's name. It's not him either. I think his name is Bubba. I think it was Bubba. It's, it's not, not him, Peanut. It's not Peanut. It's peanut is not peanut. funny. It's Peanut is peanut. not funny. Yes, it is. Yes, he is. There was this one bit he did where uh, he uh, there an quote unquote an Asian person uh, wrote him a letter saying he didn't like how racist they were being towards Asian people so Peanut was, <laughs> was reading it in an Asian accent <laughs> I still laugh about it to this day I watched it when I was like 12 oh my gosh I remember I used to watch Jeff Dun- Austin's probably gonna have to cut that he might have to cut that <laughs> well, he might have to cut I said. listen Jacob didn't say it Jeff Dunham said it yeah he did exactly we didn't we're True. just we're only saying what he said we're not i'm a good guy yeah yeah no but um and i'm very handsome wow. how about um bet you didn't know that now did you okay you guys so i was thinking about this how so have you guys ever heard of what is it Ugh, i can't remember the name of it it so it's this anime from like the 80s fortnite no <laughs> <laughs> so it was this anime Fortnite two, they um, and it it, the, it was a very popular one. Oh, okay, I remember it was Udisei Yatsura, and basically it had a version of the theme song 
or not it wasn't the same it was a different version that was for the italian version of it and in the, over there it was called like lamu something it was like lamu uh they recorded they made an italian version of it and th- for years they've never been able to fi- it, it's really good too it like people of everyone agrees it's better than the original and they've never been able to find for 100% who made it and they haven't even able to been been able to find a full version of the song either and uh they this like the only lead they were able to find uh they found out it was composed by the same people who wrote the power rangers theme song i'm not even kidding it was you mean mighty morphin power rangers yeah Go, go, power rangers yeah it was the same people who worked on that and crazy enough i might be wrong but it was also the same the guy who sung the Italian song, the Italian anime opening, was also the guy who sang the Power Rangers opening. Now that's truly epic. Yeah, and crossover when that's I think that's just crazy. That's crazy. You ever hear something so crazy, Jacob? Yeah, Jacob, you ever heard something so crazy? All right, so <clears throat> here's the thing. Um, I don't really listen to people unless they talk like Peanut from Jeff Dunham. Uh. So I, I, that just went whoosh over my head, you know. Uh, my name's Jacob. I'm stupid. <laughs> uh, he's not gonna hear you though. He's not. You're not talking like peanut. My name's Jacob. I'm stupid. I have no friends. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm kidding. All right. Kidding. Well, uh, but um, <laughs> just kind I do of have a question today, though. We? Can you do a impersonation of um? I forgot his name. I, you know, the terrorist skeleton. All I can really do is the whole like I kill you thing. All right, how about, uh, uh, what was his name, Jeff? Or no, Jose, the uh, jalapeno on a stick. Oh, that's got to be my favorite. <laughs> Never mind. That's my favorite. Holy cow, I forgot oh, about that. Jose's your jalapeno favorite? Jalapeno on a stick. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I forgot about that one. It is such a stupid concept. It's like, such mm, a I need stupid, a really creative it, and, like, cool-looking puppet. What can I come up thing. with? How about a jalapeno on a stick? Dick. Jalapeno on a stick. It's so stupid. <laughs> it's so stupid it's when you think about idea. it. <laughs> There's no reason for it. It really isn't, but it's great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, nice. Jacob, I mean, not Jacob. Austin, you can't make fun of me for the way I talk, bro. You can't do that. Oh, uh, if you if thou <laughs> shalt say say you can't, you, can't, you can't do that, Austin. It's banned. It's illegal now. You can't do that. All right, fine. Well, anyways, if we are all settled and prepared, Jacob, why don't you take us on a journey through the wondrous world of friction? Oh, I would love to. So, as you guys know, I am a reason user. I live and I bleed for it. So Reason was like, hey guys, so how about we released a, a rock extension or a VST for you uh, dumb folk uh, over there listening to our podcast uh, via audio. And it's literally just a, a you know, standard mill, uh, like violin instrument, violins or, uh, you know, other, it's actually a lot of different instruments, even banjo, but it's mostly, it's mostly string instruments, right? You got violins, you got, I think, cellos. Uh, then you got some wind instruments there. But the whole point of it, it's less of a sample-based VST where it's like, all right, here's a sample, play it. It's more it's more of the actual way you play these instruments is what it focuses on. So it focuses on, do you, are you, uh, you know, bowing it? Are you plucking? If you're bowing it, what position are you doing it? How much pressure are you using? Oh, do you want to do tremolo? Um, Why you did want- you say it like that? Why'd you add so much emphasis on the, like the middle E? Uh, I don't pronounce tremolo very often. Yeah, <laughs> it's why like most like why'd you do like tremolo? Tremolo, tremolo. hello, tremolo. hey, got some tremolo. Um, wow. It was, I, it was, you know personally, I pronounce it tremolo. Okay, you should go home. I am. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you should go ha. home some more. Beat that. You should go extra home. 
<laughs> go, um, go extra home for extra reverb. Yeah, extra home. Just like you start a home podcast where you just talk about like cooking and like home renovation. This is called Extra Home. <laughs> extra <laughs> Extra home. home Depot. It's just Home Depot, but there's more. We um, we need a we need a film uh, an episode of X. No, you know how the people do like the twenty four hour Walmart fort challenge. We need to do that, but instead film an episode of extra reverb in our toilet paper fort. Uh, I like that idea. Um, I'm would be a, cool. I'm looking up a picture of friction right now because I'd be able to uh, explain a little better visually. But anyways, yeah. So you got you know how you boat how you play it. You know is a big thing. You have different resonator bodies, and that's kind of like the uh, the source. Of like the actual sound of the instruments, you got violins, you got, and then that's where you get like more experimental. There's even like the human vo- voice, or um, you know, there's even a banjo in it. Like I said, that was kind of cool. Then, uh, then uh, you know, you got your strings and you got your harmonics. Uh, then the the coolest part is the articulation. You know how you know how you're playing while you're playing basically uh mostly using the mod wheel you know you kind of get like a quiet little like and then you move up the mod wheel it goes like an actual you know instrument and you know it's really cool like swell yeah yeah Yeah, it's really cool uh it's 99 dollars uh but i do a subscription through reason to where you know you get an x amount of plugins uh, right, and then you pay a monthly fee. I went from ten dollars. I decided to upgrade to, to nineteen dollars a month. So I I added that and a whole bunch of other things. I'm gonna start experimenting with. Sorry, I hit the mic. Uh, you can hear that posting. It'll be like, eh. but it's cool. Um, and then you got control keys on the bottom and the lower octaves of the piano, and that's literally just uh, and it shows you which keys does what. You know, you press that key, and this is something Reason does often, and then that key will affect like what you're doing while you're playing. The you know, performance. You got mod envelopes. It will, it, it got, will affect the performance. Like it will affect the one performance. Will, one will be spiccato, one will be pizzicato, another will be like One will be tremelo. Yeah. And glide. You got your LFOs. You got a little. You got a small little mod matrix. So that's always kind of cool if you know what those are. And uh, a really cool feature, and it's one of my favorites, is there's a doubling feature. So you could put like, oh, do you want it to sound doubled? As uh, if there are like two different people playing at the same time, or let's say like two different takes, and you can affect the timing of that, and you can affect even like the stereo imaging of that, so it kind of like how wide it sounds more or less. And I think you get like up to like four, uh, like four people, oh, well, you know, quote unquote people kind of playing the take at the same time. That's pretty cool. So you know, it's a really cool nifty plugin. I definitely recommend watching Reason's video. It's like eleven minutes, uh, but their their videos are awesome. They're just um, they're just entertaining to watch. I watch them for fun like all the time. So check it out. Yeah. Dude. Pretty cool, huh? Yep. You've got an EQ. Any 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 instrument with a built-in EQ is mm. Just kidding, I never use them most of the time. <laughs> I never use them either. <laughs> I never yeah, use them. Yeah, I just yeah. use the actual Neither EQ. I. It's too much it's, thinking. Yeah, no, it's um I I don't know what you, I'm thinking about getting a new VST I'm th- or an AU, I guess, because I'm using Logic. Uh I can't remember what it's. Boo! Shut up, Jacob. Forehead. I, I have logic too. <laughs> Wait, what? I don't know. <laughs> no, but no, I'm, I'm sophisticated. I got Reason Eleven, so I could use Reason in Logic. Talk about uh, uh logic. That's Lex level. I'm thinking. I'm thinking about whether or not I should get like try to get Superior Drummer. I've heard about that. Superior Drummer. Yes, yeah, pretty good. What's wrong with Logic's uh, uh, Drummer? Uh, smart drummer. Nothing actually. I I use them all the time. It's just I like the sound of them. I I want to check it out too. I used a uh, Logic drummer uh like twice already. I used it more recently for an instrumental project I'm working on. It sounded really cool. Like I liked how I executed it. The thing is, you have to make your own presets because if you just use the regular ones, it's not going to be the best. What do you mean thing. by make your own presets? Like you can like change around the sounds to make it oh, sound yeah. like I have. I definitely like do I that. don't ever. I rarely ever use like the default sounds. You know, recently I did a cover of "In Bloom" by Nirvana, and. I used, uh, I tried to get as close as I could to Dave Grohl's drum sound with it. And I got pretty close. I sent it to Austin. Austin said he liked this drum sound on it. So, you know, I felt like I got good. I don't, I don't know. It's just, you have to play around with it a lot. Figure out what you want. Now, I don't know much about Superior Drummer, but would you say it's like friction, but for drumming? Is Can you affect like 
oh, how you hit probably like, more the like snares. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course you can. Of course you can. Superior drummer, I'd say, is even more realistic. I bet it is. I, I ought to check it out. What's cool about uh, what Logic's uh, smart drummer, I bet Superior Drummer does it too. I like how you can have it playing. Uh, fo- it follows along with the song, and it just goes off the transients from your from your audio. Uh, and it kind of like gives you a more like playing in time with the music with like your actual song. So I, I you know, I, I use that feature pretty often. Yeah, no. Um, well, I mean, the thing with Superior Drummer is it's not drum patterns, it's sounds. So like it's basically you could just put, use it. So is it is it more like a sample based? Uh, yeah, it's more like you like you could take you could take the drummer sounds and put them like the drummer tracks and put them over the superior drummer ones and it could play on that. You, you, yeah, guys, you can use um Logic Smart Drummer and export the MIDI. Boom! I have not done that yet because you know I just haven't. That's yeah. That's nah, a thing though. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay, talking about because I mentioned Nirvana earlier. Did you guys see how the new Batman movie used something in the way? <laughs> I'm for sorry. The trailer. I'm not familiar with the band Nirvana, the indie band, or what's going on. Yeah, they're kind of really underground, you know. <laughs> Indeed, they're, they're really underground? underground. You probably have never heard of that. You know that song? They did a really good song that just never really took off called "Smells Like Teen Spirit." You know, it's just it's a shame. Ah, I can't say I've Underrated. heard of it, but it sounds it sounds pretty edgy. Definitely, definitely not the type of thing you'd hear played ten thousand times in guitar stores. It's the type of song to where. If you heard it once, you would never forget it because you would just understand every single word and it would all resonate with you, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, no, they used something in the way and I don't know, like, because I can't really say anything because I didn't, you know, I'm not a member of Nirvana or nor Kurt, Kurt Cobain, but knowing, like, how he acted towards, like, the press and, like, the media and stuff, I don't know how he would have, I don't think he would have liked his, like, his song about him living under a bridge in Washington, you know, I don't think he'd appreciate it being used to promote a Batman movie. Uh, if he doesn't, then he's a Dumbo because it's Batman. Jacob, he, he's he's dead, man. Well, yeah, but I'm saying if he were to care, if he were alive, it's implied. I remember, dude, Kurt Cobain was such honestly like a punk, and I'm pretty sure Austin <laughs> can agree with me. True. Like for one, they when they got on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine, he wore a T-shirt that said "Corporate magazines still suck" for the photo shoot. <laughs> did they? Because uh, he did hated they censor Ro- it at all. Like, ah, we don't care. No, they it, they just used it on the cover. He hated Rolling Stone because he felt he like on. they were always they were always like misquoting him. How about that? Yeah, and uh. Ironic. Yeah, and they had the last word. I hate being misquoted. And it's it's crazy because like, you know, I'm this is probably gonna make Austin mad. He would destroy a guitar like every show. So like every new town they'd have to go to, they'd have to go in the guitar shop and buy him like a really cheap Stratocaster cop clone, and just let him like change the strings up so he could play it left handed, so he could just destroy it at the end of the show. Been there, done that. It's crazy the stories behind that whole group, though. Like how, like there's one I remember I th- I, some interview Dave Grohl did where he talked about how they 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 were um touring and Dave's drums were really messed up and apparently and apparently he told the manager to he asked if he could get a new drum kit and the manager was like Nah, nah, you can you you'll make it and so he actually got he asked Kurt. Kurt Cobain to purposely destroy his drum kit during the show so that the manager would have to buy him a new one. Hmm. Man, it wasn't just Kurt. They were all yeah. punks. No, like, uh, there's a f- funny video of Chris Novoselic during one of their MTV performances. He throws his bass up in the air to be punk, you know, and it ends up landing right on his head. And he actually had to walk, run off stage. And, like, they said that they went in there... There's a whole video, like Dave Grohl said that he was like, after the show, a bunch of people start running up to him and they're like, you know, Chris got knocked in the head with his bass. And he said that he was expecting Chris to be like, you know, having a bunch of people around him, helping him out. You know, he expected to be some medical situation with a giant, he said, but he goes in there and it's just Chris with a, with a big old like knot on his head with an ice pack. And he's talking to Brian May from Queen and that's it. Okay. And like, that's just the crazy part about that whole time is like, 
Because you got, like, that was such a weird time for music when, like, one year a band could be, like, super small, you know, and, like, playing, going, like, not even selling out gigs. And the next year, one of them's drinking champagne and talking to, like, the guitars from one of the greatest rock bands ever made. It's crazy. No industry plants either. Yeah, no, they weren't even in, yeah, no, like, that's the craziest part. I don't think you could get that. Like, I, I guess Lil Nas X would be a good example of that in today, you know. About the same, yeah. Yeah, like, not, and, you know, I, I think. Same I, sort of mindset. Yeah, the same sort of idea of, like, a person who was one, literally a week was, like, sleeping on his, you know, his, I think he said it was, like, his sister's apartment's floor. And then the next week he's got the biggest, you know, the most, the most successful song, like, ever, basically. Yeah, by Billboard. It's insane, you know. Like, I honestly would hope that that doesn't happen to me. Like, I'm not saying I hope, I don't hope, like, I hope all of us get big, but I don't think, I think we can all agree we don't want it to happen overnight. Hmm. Because that'd just be too much of a thing to adjust to. Perhaps unsustainable? Hmm. Unsustain. <gasps> I can, I can personally say if I got big really quickly, I'd probably be more suicidal i i I wouldn't (laughs) no i would probably i'd i'd probably not buy a mansion i'm not into mansions would you guys buy a mansion i'd want a nice house but not necessarily a mansion you know i get my tesla obviously then i'd I'd build my home studio in the basement jacob would jacob would buy everything oh i would buy i would deck out my studio i'd buy just like decent house and have like like a crazy studio in the basement. Oh, in that Tesla. I know for a fact which house I'd buy. There's this house in near me, in like a, the next town over, which is where I go to school, and it's so nice. It's got like that old, like I, I if I could find a photo of it, I'll send. You don't have to. I don't think you should put it in the video because that might give away locations. But I want to know for you, you guys' the sake. There's this house. And I know for a fact I'd buy it. I know for a fact the, if I got enough money, I'd go and buy that, like buy that right then and there. Because I just, it's such a nice house. And the thing is, is like, my thing is like, I it just shocks me how people immediately go to buying. Because you know that's the whole thing is is like when the that that causes problems. At least in my opinion, it causes problems later on. Like say something happens, say you lose. Say you stop doing music. How are you going to keep supporting, you know, a huge mansion if you don't have all, of, you know, if you don't have the money anymore from the music? Mm-hmm. That's my thing. That's why I'd buy like a, a not a, not a, nor, you know, I'd buy something that was nice, but I'm not going to buy like a mansion or anything. Yeah. And just because you're famous doesn't mean you're getting paid. That is true. Yeah, exactly. That is true. That you is, get that is very true. And not make you get, depends on what kind of, uh, contract you sign with the record label you get ripped off very easily and it's it's sad though just That's gotta like understand what, hap- what you're getting yourself into 100 percent. yeah no and my thing is is like i i definitely would agree, i definitely would do what jacob said though. i would definitely deck out my studio and everything I mean, that's like my the biggest most fear part, right because yeah that's, that's like where your the jaw is what you're doing yeah my biggest fear is you know because I'm, tr- I'm trying to set up a studio across the street for me my biggest fear is you know, if if I'm in my house and someone breaks in, I'm there. I can do something about it. But if I if it happens across the street, I don't know anything. Mm-hmm. I don't I, unless I have alarms set up, which yeah, I probably will. Start setting up. A, you know, get some. We probably shouldn't say in the podcast. You don't have any alarms, but I think we're on yeah. No, but nobody here knows matter. my exact. Nobody but, here knows my exact location either. Stupid. Yeah, get a uh, get a ring or a nest. Go from there. Yeah. Yeah, been running out there. Like yet? I mean. How is that studio coming along? Like, would you say it's like at least somewhat functional? It's, it's. I don't even got equipment in there yet, man. My oh. parents don't want me. To, my parents don't want me to move anything in there yet because the house itself isn't. There's problems with it. Mold. It's like a lot. The AC. The AC. No, it's not that old. The, the AC for one is a big problem. The AC isn't working right in the house. Uh, there's some spots where there's like. So like I'm I'm having I'm gonna have it on the top floor of the house because that top floor has like a whole bunch of like outlets and stuff for me to use and but the problem with the house is that the stairway to get there has a bad mold issue 
So I have to get that cleaned. So it's just a whole bunch of steps. I asked you if you had mold, and you said you didn't have mold. Did when? I said, did it have mold? He thought that you said, was it old? Oh. Oh, no, I said mold. to be fair, I thought oh, that you, you said, said that mold? too. Yeah, I thought yeah. you said, was it old? No, yeah, no. Um, Yeah, it's got mold. I was confused by some... your answer about why I just, I just let it happen. Well, yeah, no, see, that, that's um, just... the reason I'd want my own studio... Oh, Discord cut. Um, I was going to say, the reason I'd want B. my own studio mostly is so I can, like, do vocals because, like, I don't, I don't sing when my parents are home. So, you know, sometimes, you know, it's hard to find opportunities to sing sometimes, get those vocals down. It'd be nice to have, like, a separate spot where I can do it without worrying. It sucks when, like, you know, because my thing is, and I t- you know, especially when, like, your family walks in while you're trying to record something. It sucks, especially when you get in, like, the mood. Like, when you, you know what I mean? When you're in that mood where you're just, like, absolutely hammering out the notes that you need true and then all of a sudden oh hello there's my family and now i gotta like stop what i'm doing and hopefully try to get back in that whole mindset so uh discord cut a little bit so you're saying you don't sing when uh your parents are home either oh, oh i i do but um i would just rather not most yeah of the time. i feel yeah yeah uh it's just like for me, my singing, like, it's very, I guess you could say dynamic. You know, you listen to, like, my songs. You listen to, like, uh, you know, Nothing I Can Do, Christmas Wish. or Just most of my songs, I sing real high and real low, and it's really loud most of the time because I just, obviously, I can't articulate as well if I'm singing quietly. And it's like, I don't want anyone to hear me if possible. Like, I'm so paranoid, like, that my neighbors can hear me, and, like, it causes so much stress when doing vocals. But it's just how it is, man. This is how it goes. Yeah, no, nah, it's, um... And you gotta do it, like, a million takes. It's not like I can nail it at once. It's not like I can just do it real quick. Like, oh, right, it's over. It's, it's, like, sometimes it's like, oh, this took, like, 50 times to finally get it right. Yeah, I don't nah, even get me started um... on having to, like, re like, do, you know, redo everything. It's like, oh, I I messed up, you know, it just isn't good. The hardest thing is when, for me at least, is harmonies. That's the thing that's hardest for me because I'll be doing one and thinking, oh, yeah, this is good. And then, uh, oh, I listen to it and it sounds awful. Like, yeah, that's why you got to, um, what I like to do if possible, I just like, I MIDI them out first with like a piano and just sing along with it. I do that sometimes, but sometimes there's songs that I do. Where I don't know it's, what the notes are. So I just sort of... Yeah, it's harder to do harmonies um, just like off the top of your head because you just end up like kind of singing weirdly. It's like... I, you just... you just Because you have to... Uh, harmonies sound weird. Like they don't sound really usually good by themselves. They just sound really good when they're with that, you know, vocal take they're behind. At least, yeah, no, no. You know? Yeah, like my, um, my sister like actually learned how to sing... And she's really good at, like, picking up harmonies. Like, she can easily listen to a song and be like, oh, yeah, this is the harmony that needs to go with that. I want to do more harmonies in my songs, but it's hard to find, like, opportunities. Like, oh, there needs to be a harmony here. Because, like, you know, it, even, like, Blink-182, I've heard him say, like, I know, I, like, I feel like a song is done when this harmony is on it. And it's like, yeah, man, you got to get those harmonies, get that polish in. I was like, does it really need it, though? I don't want to force harmonies in. I was like, I don't know sometimes. Like, oh, should this have a harmony? Should I just leave it alone? Yeah. I don't know. I just kind of do it randomly, I guess. It came out really good in my song, Nothing I Can Do, though. Like, oh, yeah. Mm. That ending wouldn't hit us hard without it. 100%. It's so odd because you sort of have to get like a reflex for it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, you know, you sort of have to understand like, oh, yeah, this still has a bit. True. Anyways, we were talking about Coker's house and how... We thought it was getting old. Ah, oh, your house is old, you stinky stinker. Then. Shut up. Speaking of getting old, though, there is a certain album that's been making the rounds recently. Uh, it's been getting a lot more traction and attention in the past few months. It has six volumes, and they've been being released over the past four years. The collection together is known as Everywhere at the End of Time by an artist who goes by the name The Caretaker. Okay. Supposedly, this album is supposed to simulate what 
having dementia is like. And the six volumes are supposed to correspond to the six kind of onsetting stages of dementia. Meaning, you know, obviously dementia begins at stage zero, which is normal brain activity. Normal brain go brrr. And then it, it sort of proceeds from there, starting at stage one. So this album is kind of avant avant-garde, kind of noise, really experimental type. The funny thing is, once you get to the end of stage three, you're not even halfway through it. The final three stages are far more than half of the album. I remember I drew a funny, com- I drew a comparison because the first couple parts of the album have a lot of like, it sounds sort of like an old 78 record, you know? And I sort of drew, a f- I thought it was ironic because it's, it's the guy's name is the caretaker, which I think is funny because the music sort of reminded me of the shining at first, <laughs> you know, yes, how of all those old ballroom records are in it. And yes. then the guy's name is the caretaker, which I think was funny you know yeah um yeah so basically we all listen to it uh in various lengths i listen to it all because some people were saying like this album made them go crazy or gave them a mental breakdown so i was like i have to experience this for myself <laughs> yeah that's how i sure reverb ends austin Great has idea, a mental austin, breakdown yeah austin has a mental breakdown not clickbait watch now. austin hears about austin's like they're like hey austin this drug is highly addictive if you take it he, you he just takes it he doesn't even like, listen like to the rest he's of like that. you know what i kind of want to try that let's do it jacob's or austin's word on his tombstone he dies is gonna be i told you that thing wouldn't shoot <laughs> lol that's going to be the last word. On, that's going to be the words on his tombstone. I told you that thing wouldn't shoot. I'm telling you this thing won't shoot. Anyways, um, yeah, I just, had to tr- I just had to try it for myself because I could not believe that listening to an album would give someone a mental breakdown. Yeah, no. It- and I listened to it all. I didn't even put it on double speed. So I literally took six and a half hours out of my time and listened to it. And I have no idea why people would say this would give them a mental breakdown. It's like the but whole thing. But it was interesting. Of- it was very interesting. The six stages, like I said, they correspond to the six stages of onsetting dementia. Number one, well, actually, I'll get to this in a second, but you go on, give your reactions. I think it's sort of the same type of thing as like that one song, I think it was called like Blue, it wasn't Blue Monday, that's a New Order song. But it was this one song, I think it was called like Blue Sunday. And it was the one song, you know, where everybody said, if you, oh, whoever listens to it is going to commit suicide. That sort of thing. You mean Lavender Town? No, 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 not, not Lavender Town. <laughs> that one, uh, that one actually Sunday. does. I can feel that one affecting my brain a bit. Not going to lie. One is, that one's weird. Yeah, no. Gloomy Sunday is the name of it. Uh, it's also known as the Hungarian suicide song. It's sort of like that, I think, where people just sort of start this rumor just to sort of start it, you know, just to sort of like make a whole tale about the song, you know, like, yeah, like, like the thing about Sunday, like gloomy Sunday, there's nothing about it that makes it inherently like, you know, you're going to listen to it. It's just, it's sort of, I, it has a bunch of coincidences about everybody who's written it or recorded it committing suicide, which is why people think that way. But it really isn't. If you listen to the song, you're not going to have any sort of crazy thing going on in your head. Same thing with the Caretakers, you know, uh, episodic album thing. I don't really know how to describe it. It's it's a uh, it's an experience, you know. Um, it it's just I think it's just people sort of wanting to have some sort of rumor around it, some sort of like mystique. True, mystique. Mis- oh, we're going to steak. Mustonks. Right. Anyways, all right, so... Extra reverb on a steak. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so again, we all listen to it. Basically, again, six stages. Stage number one is kind of the uh, old ballroom records. So, like, these jazz recordings from, like, the 30s or maybe 40s, slow jazz ballads. It's basically just that with some reverb, delay, and some noise crackle. So it's kind of supposed to represent 
the memories starting to sort of fade. Stage two means that continues some more, so like there's more like low passing and more noise and more crackling. And this stage is supposedly where the memories sort of begin to blur into each other. And like only the stronger memories remain. And then stage three, obviously that happens even more. And in this one, there was kind of like some detuning and slowing down. And apparently in this stage, only the very strong memories survive and the rest just kind of blur away. Stage four is where you kind of started to hear records being overlapped over each other. Like you'd hear two or three recordings at once. They'd all be slowed down and you'd hear lots of noise, lots of um, reverb and other effects like that. And stage five was kind of, it was all kind of really muddy and blurred. And the songs, if you could even call them that, were really very long. Like all of them over 20 minutes. And uh, it just seemed more like noise than music. And then six, it was complete noise. And then at the very end, for like the last five minutes, it was like this really slow choir song. That was very interesting. And that was it. I guess it's supposed to be a sort of idea of when you're, you know, because you know people with dementia get to the point where they ended up, you know, they end up passing away. Yeah, that was it. That was it, obviously. I I guess that's what it's supposed to mean. Yeah. Um, By the way, the album covers for these six volumes are all different and unique. And they also all kind of represent the stages of dementia. Um, I will look at them right now. But the first one it kind of looks like a book or a magazine and that kind of represents how the memories can be obviously uh, attributed to something that we would recognize, you know. The second album artwork is a flower pot, but the design of the flower pot is kind of like something, it almost looks like something an AI would generate, to be honest. The third one kind of looks like a very impressionistic painting of a bush or a tree, showing that it really is just like the striking, the strikingness of it is beginning to fade and it's really just symbolism and bad memory. The fourth one is where things start to get interesting. It kind of looks like a human head, but there's like different colorings. It looks like a statue actually. And there's, like, characters written on the hair. Um, Very interesting there. Five is very, very abstract. It kind of looks like somebody... uh, To me, it looks like a kind of frou-frou French queen from, like, the 15th century walking down some stairs that look very odd and have, like, a weird stepping stool thing on them as she's holding an umbrella out in front of her. And she's in her big frilly dress, but it's all moving out behind her. And uh, then the last one is the most fascinating of all. It's a canvas, or no, it's like a frame, a picture frame, but the picture's been removed. And you just see some blue tape. Mm, That, yeah, no. Oh, and it said also, it said also stage six is without description. Anyways. Really? Yeah, in the dis- in the in the uh, description of this, which will be linked in the mm. description of this video, it will have descriptions of the stages of dementia. Um, and it says stage six is without description. So, anyways, um, and it says audio remembered, disfigured, and forgotten by the caretaker. Yeah, like, and that is that. That that album was crazy. Like it. I don't know what to say. Like, honestly, like it sort of, it touched me in a way that was really hard. Now I'm not, I'm not even cause, um, I'll see if you feel like this is too deep, by the way, you can just cut what I'm saying after this. So, but, um, like, cause like my grandma had dementia. That's why she passed away like three years ago. And when I listened to that, cause I did actually listen to it, Austin, I'm not kidding with you. It, it was so like, especially near the end, it got really hard to listen to because like, you know, when you have something like that, that's happened to you before, it's sort of, 
It was it was a great album though. I really loved it. It it's weird because it's like it's sad in some ways because you have that you know like like I said if you're someone like me who's had personal experience with that it's really sad in that way but it also sort of lets you understand what it is like what exactly is happening and what is going on i i genuinely love those albums though i think those were some fantastic works and true like you said i think the album covers really helped with it because it it it's always good when an album cover is expressive it's sort of an of a a physical representation of the album as a whole. Yeah. Pretty much. And but yeah, um it was an interesting experience for sure. One could say that. It was hard to listen to the final stages because after a time they just sort of became just noise and like they had no meaning. But of course that was the point. Yeah, and it's I'm not trying. It's it's it's. We're ending on a dark note, it, man. It, it's not really. <laughs> it ain't dark. It's only as dark as you let it be. I will say it gave me a lot of closure. Mm-hmm. On because like I, I like I'm just saying, and I'm not trying. Like I'm not trying to make this sad. I'm just saying like for real because I've always had issues with thinking about what happened when my grandma passed away, and this album really helped me get that closure because. I know now, it, you know, because it sort of help, lets you understand, like I said, what goes on with that. Hmm. And it it sort of helped me understand that it wasn't something I could have helped. It wasn't something that was my fault or anything like that. It was something. And it, it was that was it was honestly amazing, though. And I commend the guy who made it because it, it's hard to express thoughts like that. It's hard to express anything. Any sort of feeling is hard to express in an album. And when it's done as well as, you know, the caretaker did with this, that that's when, you know, you've got something that was really good. And it was genuinely really good. And it was worth the listen. I would listen to it before I went to... I would listen to, like... I would try to sort of listen to it every... A bit of it every night. And to the point where I was averaging about an hour a night, you know? So I was able to finish it in about, like, six days. Six or seven days. And it was... It was good. It was really good, honestly. Very nice. Now, if only you would do the same whenever I post a video. I know. Whenever, okay, dude, Austin. When no, no, that's that's funny though. That's the funny part. Like, like Austin posts like a two minute video, and I'm just like, okay, cool. Austin posts a six hour album. I'm like, dang, that's crazy. I'm gonna listen to that. Two minute video. I sleep. Anyways, hopefully you guys behave the way Coker did towards this album whenever you see us upload an extra reverb episode. And with that, I think we will bring this episode to an end. Any final thoughts, you two? This was fun. I had a good time recording this episode. I don't know what to do about dementia, but um, if you want to prevent Alzheimer's, which also sucks, uh, buy aluminum-free deodorant. <coughs> That's what I did. If you guys want to prevent... Uh, also use fluoride free toothpaste if you got if you or if you or a loved one has ever been diagnosed with mesothelioma just know you're entitled to financial compensation (laughs) end it here end it here cut it cut it cut cut the thing austin cut it cut cut it